Hi. Uh, we are live. Just wanted to make everybody well aware that we are live on the uh, main show. Uh, welcome, everyone, to the undercard of the Hippy Dippy Championship. Uh, this is the fatal four-way. Four people going head-to-head -head over the issue of toxic masculinity. This will be what the first official match that will affect people's ranking in the ranking system. Uh, which is people who in the future might be able to challenge for the championship belt, which is the one name, one face, one champion to define Twitch politics going forward. And so I'm excited to have this long lost uh, list of characters, and I will let you all introduce yourself before going into some ground rules before the match begins. So I'm going to go around and I'm going to start with Demon Mama. Hello, everyone. My name is Demon Mama. I am a political edutainer and uh, lefty political, um, I guess, pundit um, on YouTube. Uh, uh, I mostly stream on YouTube, but you can also find me at my website, demonmama.com, which has all my links. We spend a lot of time on my Discord, which is awesome. Um, we have a super robust community, and I do a lot of debate Spoon. content, um, do a lot of uh, cultural issues, um, economic issues. Really, really great. If you, uh, if you like that kind of stuff with a little bit of spice and a little bit of fervor, you want to come by. Um, but yeah, demonmama.com uh, is where you can find all my stuff. And I'm um, very, very happy to be here tonight. So thanks for having me, Dylan. Happy to have you. And next, we're going to go over to Merrick. Hi, I am a uh, YouTube and Twitch streamer. I'm a sex worker advocate. Um, I don't stream all that often. Um, I'm working on more pre-made content right now. Um and uh yeah yeah thank you happy to have you on next we're going to throw it over working? to connor points yeah so my name is connor i run a youtube channel named counterpoints the easiest way to find me is to just hop on twitter and type in connor points c-o-n-o-r-p-o-i-n-t-s c-o-n-o-r-p-o-i-n-t-s or just type it into the search bar um i identify as center right um basically uh lefties and progressives and liberals are like oh you're so sensible you're so sensible you're so sensible and then i say something and then we scream at each other for a half hour um so that that's basically how it works because i do have chud takes i do have principles behind my chud takes I try to be as reasonable as I possibly can be. Sometimes I'm not, sometimes I am. Um, so I tr try to be fair, uh, but I also, you know, I I've been known to yell and get frustrated in the past. So <laughs> happy to happens. have you on. Happens. Now we're throwing up to Lycan, who has a very interesting setup for us all. Hello, my name is Lycan. I am on my last day of political streaming. I was not gonna do this anymore, but uh, my, my boy Dylan asks, Lycan answers. And so I otherwise do cooking content. So as we uh, roast up these fucking pundits, we're also going to be roasting some tasty food. So thank you for having me, Dylan. Interesting. Happy to have him on. Uh, you know, the content's going to be spicy, but so is the food. So we're going to go into the first uh, debate, which is going to be about toxic masculinity. These four will be going head to head over the topic. The next one, which starts in about two hours, is Bastiat versus Vosh for the Hippy Dippy Championship title. Now, the topic, of course, is toxic masculinity. Let me go over some ground rules. Now, all rules of the oh. normal hippy-dippy usually yes, apply. Uh, so I'm pointing to, of course, the idea that we don't over talk over me when I am talking. That is a big no-no. If I am here, I am should Sorry be less that. involved than usual. I'm only getting involved to make sure people can say their points. I do not police niceness. But there are certain words that are banned due to the nature of the type of how it moves the topic away from the debate topic. These words include the B word, the C word, and any number of slurs. The only exception, except for the slurs, is if you are quoting a politician. Now, the magic notepad was lost in my transition, so we do not have a magic notepad. I am so sad to say I will just write, try to type your name on a notepad on my, uh, on my computer. Uh, besides that, I think that's basically all of the topics. I want to say to everyone at home that this show is also extremely, even though it's somewhat educational, is a lot about entertainment, and you should keep that in mind when watching this program. And none of these people are experts on what we are going to be talking about, meaning they don't have a degree in, in this manner. If they do consider themselves an expert, they will speak up and declare it so, and you can analyze if they are. Please, I can hear my own voice from somebody. From Merrick, so I'm going to mute Merrick. Okay, so they will declare themselves an expert if they are one. Is there any confusion around the rules? I would like to declare myself an expert in toxic masculinity. I would say you are. Now, <laughs> I will say 
for everyone at home, please listen to other uh, news sources and agencies for information on the topics we discuss here. And please do your own research. That will be the last thing I say as we go into it. And we're going to start this fatal four-way with about one minute opening statements, starting with Demon Mama. Yeah. Um, so yeah, thanks for having me. I'm glad we're getting uh, an opportunity to discuss uh, something like toxic masculinity. Um, I think that, especially here in the United States, the discourse around gender in general is um, pretty toxic. Um, and a lot of that, unfortunately, does have its roots in the uh, history of a sort of patriarchal organization of um, society. Now, I am personally of the belief that what we generally refer to as toxic masculinity harms uh, men, women, non-binary people, and anyone else. Uh, it is, in my opinion, a, a very negative thing that gets reinforced often um, subconsciously or unconsciously um, from generation to generation to generation. And um, personally, I would like to see the end of such a cycle. I would like to see the end of us um, reinforcing and for and uh, pushing um, things like, oh, you know, the idea that like, oh, men can't cry or um, that women should, uh, you know, are too emotional and need to be led by a firm, strong, um, unemotional man. I think these things are harmful to everyone involved, um, though I do think that historically a lot of these structures have um, had particularly um, egregious effects on the women who have to live under them. Um, but I think there's a lot of room for nuance on this topic. Um, for those who don't know, my general position is that of gender abolitionism. And I'm sure we'll probably end up talking on that some bit. But basically, I believe that people should be able to express themselves however they see fit. And that should not have any, like, whatever word we want to call that expression should not have any impact on your ability to do so freely and without judgment in our, in our country. Um, that's my, the basic summation of my beliefs on this topic. And I'm really looking forward to talking with the rest of you. Okay, I'm going to throw it over to Merrick next. Merrick is muted because... Oh, never mind. Uh, Merrick will not be next because they have to deal with audio issues, so I'll throw it over to CounterPoints. Yeah, so um, I am I am also excited about this topic. I'm happy that Would we're already hitting some points that Merrick? I think we'll be able to articulate with some level of passion and contention. Um, so I have a liberal perspective when it comes to gender roles and all yeah, that, that was stuff. Yeah, Basically, bad. that, like... I think that gender roles are at least partially biologically rooted. I think that men act a certain way because of endocrinological reasons, not 100%. And I think a lot of these things can be socialized. Uh, but I think there are some positive aspects to masculinity, not toxic masculinity. I think there are some positive aspects to femininity. And while I understand that in a gender abolished world, um, we would be able to, uh, you know, express those variations maybe without labels or without judgment or something like that. Um, I don't think that these labels are going anywhere. So it's more a question of like, how do we navigate the labels that we already have? How do we navigate what we have that is toxic? Um, I would love to talk about some of the toxically masculine examples of like cultural tropes and cultural enforcement that was prevalent when I was coming of age in uh, the thousands. Um, I think there are some some things that were present at that time that were very normal, that were gross and disgusting um, and have improved since then, but are still around. And um, I would like to talk about, you know, ki kind of like the biological link, the cultural link, the necessary parts of masculinity or what I view are the necessary parts of masculinity, the necessary parts of femininity or what I view are the necessary parts of femininity. Um, and I think it'll be I think it'll be interesting no matter what. So, okay, wonderful. Interesting. I'm going to throw it now over to Lincoln. Hello, thank you all. Uh, so yeah, I think one of the things that we're going to have to define, what is masculinity and does it exist? Does masculinity and femininity exist? Uh, but once we get that past that point, I'm probably more aligned with Demon Mama and uh, I forget her name already because I'm a terrible person um, and I can't see it on the screen anymore. But uh, if us are probably going to team up a little on counterpoints, but that's going to depend, right? Because if we can define some agreement of what is masculinity and then what toxic masculinity is, we can then probably have a really good conversation with counterpoints about what are harmful behaviors that are encompassed by the phrase toxic masculinity, mm -hmm. such as the expectation that a man not wanting to have sex until he is ready is a, a problem, things like that. Um, and I think that's where the conversation should be focused, but I guess I'll see how this starts. Okay, uh, I am 
Merrick is currently trying to get their audio fixed, so they will just have to have a early. Uh, they will just have to be out of the uh, conversation until they can get their audio fixed. Now, if anybody I'm going can to help Merrick, over please pop to, over and help uh, Merrick. The group, and also, I just was DM'd by some judges who might be willing to uh, actually grade this, so there might actually be a winner of the Fatal Four Way. Who knows? Might be exciting, but you guys can now begin. Yeah, so uh, I think Lycan brought up a really good point. Sorry to jump in with my toxic masculinity and my mansplaining. Um, but the uh, basically, like, I, I think we should define it. And the way that I would define masculinity or femininity, uh, femininity specifically, I would decide, um, um, you know, basically define it as kind of like the the trope or the archetype. I would, I would, uh, you know, basically de describe it as the societal ideal. Obviously, these social ideals can like fle uh, can flex from side to, um, from society to society. Like Demon Mata brought up, like the stereotype that men can't cry. I actually agree. That's like a, a 100% um, shitty uh, aspect of toxic masculinity, but there were also different societies. So for instance, gr the, the Greeks, I believe, they viewed a man who wasn't capable of feeling love as emotionally stunted. They viewed a man who couldn't cry as emotionally stunted. And what they thought was best in life was basically having the full range of emotions, to not be so closed off to positive feelings, love for children, love for partners, love for the world, art, and all that kind of stuff, that you would actually want to explore these other aspects of existence, even as a, as a man. Um, but then that also encompasses some of the other negative attributes that we talked, or that we're probably going to talk about, like, uh, you know, violence, war, um, you know, all, all, you know uh, providing all these stereotypes of the male gender role. Um, and then that's that's kind of how I would describe it as this uh, stereotypical ideal that varies from society to society. So would you say that items like that, like the uh, whether or not men are expected to cry, views on what ma man's, a man's sexuality should be like when it comes to engaging with women, you know, um, things like that. Would you agree that those are, are items that make life difficult for men? Oh, fuck yeah. Um, as a matter of fact, uh, part of the reason why I wanted to talk about some of the negative tropes of like the thousands, like millennial sexual culture or whatever, is because I felt like it was particularly difficult for me uh, because I was raised by Christian conservatives. So I, I had like very strict, uh, classic Abrahamic like guidelines on what it was to be a man. And I was like, all right, well, I don't want to be a virgin until I get married and I want to drink and I want to party and I want to have fun and I want to, uh, you know, ha have fun with women uh, specifically. And so the only other option was kind of this like free for all hedonistic, no rules um, society that also kind of promoted, um, I see some skeptical looks. Uh, one of the things about the thousands, if you go back and if you watch the American Pie series, is that the, the subtext or what they say is that they, they wanna view women as whole people. But if you actually look at the films and the way that they're done is women are treated not as fully fledged human beings with personalities and principles, they're treated as experiences and conquests. And that there's a, um, there's a value to each man on how capable he is at seducing women and how many women he is capable of seducing. Exactly. And so I think that's going to kind of take the wind out of some sails until we get to, I guess, the deeper parts. I'd, I'd almost say we should start the conversation on things about the idea of toxic masculinity that you don't agree with, because mm -hmm. a lot of it isn't women being upset with men and trying to just deal with the issues of men to women. A lot of toxic masculinity is the problems. And by the way, I want to say for my background, I grew up in a similar way as you, Christian family, um, Catholic on one side, Bible thumper, West Virginian Baptist on the other. And, um, and so I, I understand that, but I think that we're, we're pretty much going to agree that like there are certain societal expectations of men for their emotional behavior, their sexual behavior, whatever. Um, so I guess if we're in agreement that that needs to be addressed, I'm assuming you think that under the title toxic masculinity comes some other ideas that are that you need to be negative. I would like to know what those are. Yeah, point, actually, um, actually, I wouldn't even mind um, getting to what's positive, because I think we would probably agree on what's negative. Well, what was actually really interesting about this conversation is I think um, characters like Steven Crowder or um, I'm trying to think of some other ones, Ben Shapiro or uh, I don't know, maybe Michael Knowles or some shit. I think they're missing actually like a massive opportunity. OK, so consent based sex culture in which both partners are educated on what they want out of each other. I would say that largely um, if it did exist in the United States, it was the very stereotypical like 
don't rape people or don't date rape people. And that was about the limits of what you could do. Um, uh, like you could lie in order to get people into bed. You could set false expectations. Um, you could basically say whatever you wanted in order to get into the sack. And while maybe I personally felt like that was pretty fucked up, I would talk to peers and they didn't think it was fucked up at all. They just thought that it was a way to get what they wanted out of the out of the sexual experience. And it didn't matter because we were all young. Um, and what as long as we got our experience out of it, then we didn't care. We weren't treating our partners um, like fully fledged human beings. We were treating them like sexual experiences and conquests um, to be uh, catered to. And what's actually interesting about that is there's actually a lot of parallels between like progressive, um, progressive sex culture or consent based culture that I think a lot of conservatives could be down with if they thought about it for more than five fucking seconds. Well, yeah. Uh, but I, I, I don't want to capitalize the time. I would No, I, I think that, I mean, help. pundits like, uh, I mean, we just, I did a special on this earlier this week on Rush Limbaugh had a huge thing about consent where he was obsessed with this idea um, and often would tie it in to like, um, like, polyamory and um homosexuality that's like oh you can all that matters is consent and and anything else goes you can and it's just like like it's such a it's such a strange point for me that so many conservative pundits were willing to um die on that hill like to me it seems like an incredibly logical and not only that but also um ethically um efficacious system to to encourage consent especially knowing the statistics that we know about sexual assault and abuse in this country which is out of it's out of control even to this day um we have just a, an unbelievable amount of uh sexual assault and abuse um and yeah i i don't entirely understand um that position but it doesn't sound like anybody here is going to be taking um that position um yeah and, Sorry, and go ahead. i guess to address the the idea of like what is masculinity i think that's an incredibly hard question to answer but i think the best way to answer it is perhaps to say uh, it is a a nebulous concept of what we associate with the uh with the gender of man which is for some people associated to the sex uh the 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 like the sex of like having xy chromosomes and for other people is not um but that is generally what we understand masculinity to be and femininity we have this sort of um long history uh but and of course even in the history it varies greatly what was accepted as masculine i mean you can even go back as as close as like the victorian era to see just unbelievably different standards in in um what was considered you know attractive for men and what was considered attractive for women um you can just step a few like like over to another country and you'll see this totally different standards um if even such concepts exist in the same way um so i do think it's very very nebulous um and again that does inform i will be completely open in this that does inform part of my reason why i approach uh generally from like a gender abolitionist perspective um is because i think that in a lot of cases um the the institutionalization of gender in our society is one that mostly serves to oppress people and force people to behave in a certain way and I know this is going to sound like a hot take, but a lot of that is fueled by consumerism because guess what? You can make a lot of money if you can brand toys as four boys or four girls and you could sell two versions of the same toy or two versions of the same razor with different prices um, by branding it t separately. Um, and it, that's unfortunate to me because I feel like it has a – I feel like this um, – like strongly dichotomized view of gender has a a um suppressive effect on on human expression so, i think you can say pretty confidently that consumerism and the and the way that our markets work does have an impact on uh, reinforcing certain gender stereotypes or gender roles or gender uh expressions but at the end of the day this has been happening for as long as human beings have been around so while we can point to it and say look how it's having an effect on modern you know gender society mm. um at the end of the day though those ideas were still happening well before we became the last and, 200 years oh, of 100 percent. and in fact i would say that a lot of those are um a lot of those things that we're mentioning are like carryovers from previous eras uh i mean we have a predominantly um like we have a predominantly patriarchal um, economy um, because 
you know, the people who had stuff when when we changed to a democratic, more democratic and market based system happened to be men because there were patrilineal fucking lines of um, uh, lines of, of secession. Like these things, of course, absolutely carry on to one another. But, uh, you know, without like oversimplifying it, I do think that right now a lot of the um, the sort of backing um of of these like the sort of gender dichotomy comes from positions of um entrenched values like 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 i said like certain consumer trends and also there is of course i do think that it is fair to acknowledge that there are um dogmatic and tra traditionalistic uh strains in our society that hold by these things even if they're no longer rational or helpful for our society right so, but i just think that focusing on mm -hmm. the uh, real quick then you can go um connor sure. just to respond to that the thing is is that i don't think that even with as much as society has progressed let's say that we lived in a in a system where just the factor of gender was not able to affect our markets right just in this hypothetical i don't think that even with all the progress of feminism over the last you know 50 years um and even if it had gone the way everyone wanted to with the utmost equality being achieved that the concept of masculine feminine gender or male female I don't think that ever dissipates because, and that's why I think it is important to kind of try to define it, even though it's it's hard and can seem nebulous because it changes constantly. And you can say, well, that's a trait that can be expressed by here and there. So um, it becomes a difficult conversation. But the point is, is that as long as that can be described, um, that we continue yeah. to have this toxic masculinity discussion as if those do exist because we have no proof that the market is the only thing yeah. keeping those things. Oh, yeah, well, and I, I never made the argument that it's can only I, the market, but but I do yeah, think can, that it can, affects it for sure. Absolutely. Yeah, can I can I back it up because I, I think um I think I might be able to find something that you'll find some contention with. Okay. Um so 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 for instance, like the, the, this is kind of where I get a I don't know, a little stereotypical, I guess. So so I'm a cishet white male, right? Like like just just never really question my gender, never really question my sexuality, never really question any of that kind of shit. Sure. Um and what what that kind of came with was a certain level of like social expectation, but also a certain level of social expectation that I agreed with. Um so so for instance, like I didn't mind that violence was promoted to me because I was naturally interested in violence. I didn't mind that the sciences and history was promoted to me because I love sciences and history. I didn't mind um, that basically like, you know, hey, kid, you want to go shoot some guns? You want to go fish? You want to go into the fucking mountains? Now, I was a little bit of a pain in the ass and I bitched a little bit. But at the same time, like, you know, I'd still really deeply value these gendered experiences. Band word. Not in a, what's that? Bitch is a band. Bitch is the band word. Oh, I'm sorry. I was using it as a verb, not a noun. I'm sorry. <laughs> Yellow flag. One point deduction. Continue. <laughs> All right. Uh, five five yard penalty. Um. So so. <laughs> Um, basically I might've whined and complained, but I enjoyed these experiences. I value them. And on top of that, like, um, I am holding the, the stereotypical masculine ideal above my own experiences as a man. Like I want to be, I want to be strong. I want to be, you know, handsome. I want people to consider me. I want to be intelligent. Like I want, I want all of these uh, like gendered expectations to be foisted upon me. And I want to judge my own like interpersonal success. Um, based off of that. Now, I, I do have a lot of friends who don't meet any of these criteria, and I think they should have the freedom to express their masculinity as as freely as they want. If they want to be dorks, if they want to be nerds, if they want to explore things, if they want to explore feminine things, I don't really give a shit. But like at the same time, I think part of the reason why we're going to find that masculinity and femininity are going to be pervasive concepts for centuries to come is because there is something deeply rooted there. And I would argue that it's at least partially biological. See, I don't, I don't necessarily, that's where I, I disagree with you. I do disagree with you on that. And you're right. I, I do disagree. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I think that there is, um, I mean, there's probably some level of biological root to most things, if not everything mm -hmm. that we do, we are biological beings nonetheless i'm not like a dualist i don't believe that there's like a soul i know some people do but i don't personally mm. um and as a result like i recognize that we are all products of our biology but the degree to which that's the case is so hard to determine we really don't know and so i generally approach things from a position of um not uh, of not like focusing on the biology of it um mm -hmm. and i i can recognize where like having um a certain framework or structure to strive for can be useful 
if you um are inclined towards that framework but for everyone else it's pretty um it's pretty difficult you know what i mean like for anyone who v violates and we know that this is true like i mean um fuck like getting uh, listen i'm trans like i i grew up very gender non-conforming um and being expected to behave one way and not being that way is an incredibly mm. painful even the most minor things will get you targeted um and and bullied and made fun of or or um or tr or, or abused even um in many cases and i think that these sort of frameworks these these masculine ideals or feminine ideals contribute to that directly they are those things are those structures are in my opinion what perpetuate them and i don't see why um we wouldn't uh be perfectly capable of having characters figures who embody certain things that you can freely associate with without having to associate that to some, something so broad as gender that doesn't even really have a coherent meaning even across generations what being a man is to people today is different than what it was to people 10 years ago even and i think that in in that regard it feels in a lot of cases like we are clinging out of a um a traditionalistic urge to something that no longer is serving us well um at all yeah, I mean, so okay, so so I'm, and, and this is this is what it boils down to, contention-wise. So so basically, I would agree with you that like masculinity is fluid over time, and that different people have different expectations of what a man is. But at the same time, I also think that there's some conceptions that basically go across time. So if you ask like a Greek man, what is you know masculinity? It'd probably be something along the lines of. You know, train hard, be strong, hold your shield and your spear, you know, don't freak out when, you know, we're being charged, uh, you know, charged in our battle lines, uh, you know, hold the wall, hold the line, all that kind of shit. And then also don't shit your pants when there's an apex predator chasing you, right? Throw some rocks at it to guard your sheep, right? That would be stereotypical masculinity. Um, yeah. And that that does perpetuate into the modern era. If you look at like a warrior culture or uh, superhero movies or anything like that, like even, even our superheroes are gendered in a certain way. So Wonder Woman can beat the fuck out of anybody, but at the same time, she's still beautiful and, you know, sexualized and like all that kind of stuff now, obviously probably created by men. Um, but these, you know, these ideas or whatever, at least from a patriarchal perspective, they seem to perpetuate throughout time and they always seem to be valued. So even like, um, you know, Victorian era uh, poets that were valued, like that were able to shade their faces, grow long hair, and wear heeled shoes. Um, it was probably still expected that they knew how to, you know, sword fight or duel with pistols. Well, like, true, but those violence... expectations aren't like um, ne those aren't necessarily good. Like, I mean, for example, um, you know, I I generally have uh, by and by and large relatively feminine interests, like by mm. stereotypical standards. But I fucking love shooting guns. Like I love that <laughs> shit. Like I and also I love fishing. Like I would go when I was like one of the few ways I was able to before my transition and before all that. Like the one of the one of the ways that I bonded with my stepdad was fishing because I love mm. that. I love that stuff. And it would be me and interestingly my ha my stepsister who's sis. And we would be the ones who'd go fishing. So these things are not entirely accurate. And a lot of them have been sort of memes that have been perpetuated by the fact that the generation before did that. And I think it's while you're correct that like some of them have stuck around forever um, for a really long time. Uh, I think that we live in we genuinely live in a very different era than we've ever lived in the past. Um, we've never been closer to a like post scarcity society than we have been now we've never been closer to a life where uh where we can actually start to address problems of our human condition that we couldn't escape before um i mean now obviously the timeline dates but it's about been a hundred years since uh, approximately more or less since we figured out that like you can actually just take hormones and it will change your body the way that you want it to change and i think that's a good thing um and but that wasn't possible for a long time. So I think that in the past, perhaps it was more understandable that people made essentializations to basically your your sex, um, even though even that isn't necessarily true, uh, depending on how far back you look and across cultures. I don't want to get too far off the main main course, but I think that a lot of these are perpetuated, again, out of habit and out of tradition and not necessarily... Um, from a position of even usefulness. Um, and I think that we would be a better society if like those, like like that, like maybe a propensity for combativeness being like a good, 
uh, like making you a good debater or making you a good uh, um, athlete was seen as a gender neutral thing because there are a lot of um, a lot of people who would consider themselves women who are super super aggressive and combative and and um, find themselves unable to find a place for themselves. So, yeah, um, yeah, okay. I, yeah. So give give me a moment here because Eric just got back, but I gotta ask Lycan. Lycan, is that guy okay? Is he taking a little swim? What's going on? No, he's gone, buddy. Uh. Rembrandt <laughs> sleeps with the fishes. Oh, oh no! <laughs> Damn. Poor guy. I'm sure he'll Poor be tasty though. I, oh, well, I'll, I'll throw it over to Merrick because Merrick has actually got some uh, got the audio back. Then I wanted to push uh, push it to a central issue, which I think might have some contention here. So Merrick, I'm throwing it over to you. Hey, um, so I missed a lot of the intros when I was trying to Wet get uh, my audio situation worked out. But as far as like my initial thoughts on this topic, um, I hope that this has not already been covered. But what I wanted to talk about in this conversation is the fact that I think toxic masculinity is a much bigger threat to our society than a lot of people acknowledge and that a lot of people talk about. Um, I also think that it's a very, very difficult subject to broach. Um, I think it's a very unforgiving subject to bring up. So I hope that we can. They're pretty close. Um, I don't know. I, I I hope that you know we can make some interesting headway on that. Um, I think Connor and considered. I probably disagree the most. Um, I, <laughs> yeah, I I genuinely very believe close, that though. it's one of the biggest threats that we face here, at least in the United States. Um, I think that we live in a rape culture that it directly contributes to that. I do agree. Um, I think it directly contributes to a lot of the rise in extremism that we've seen. Um, it's very tied to some of the mass shootings that we've seen. Um, the rise of inceldom is also another thing that's very heavily tied to. So, um, you know, I. I I also think that it's difficult to talk about because it's very, very misunderstood. And I want to make clear from the onset that my understanding of toxic masculinity is not that men and masculinity itself is toxic. It's that toxic is a modifier. Um, and that when we're discussing it, we're talking about a series of traits, a series of behaviors, as well as the suffering that that causes and how those are sort of like an Ouroboros that feed into each other and perpetuate really negative cycles for men, for trans people. Um, there's a tie to racism into it for women, for children, uh, basically for everyone that comes in contact to it. No, that was fucking dope. I got so much shit on that. But, but um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so I'll, I'll give you guys some, um, some more fuel to the fire, basically. I'll give you some more shit to contend with. Um, so why well, I actually like... wanted to post something quick. Sure. Connor, we've had a lot of talks in the past. I wanted to ask you, mm -hmm. does toxic masculinity serve a, a purpose for society, one that is useful in some of its aspects? Yeah, fuck yeah. That was actually going to be um, one of my points. So I'm not saying toxic masculinity specifically, but I am saying masculinity. Um, so, so for instance, like I, I'm, I'm trying to draw this line, um, and maybe you guys won't agree with it, but I'm going to draw it anyways. Um, so I, I would think that testosterone is largely uh, endocrinologically like related to violence. I think it's related to aggression. I think these things can be backed up by studies. I think these things can be backed up by even um, demon mama. If we were to study like human beings, uh, w e even women, um, I would be interested, like, not because I'm saying that this is biologically essentialist. Like, I like fucking art. I like dork shit. I fucking Quick question. When you, said, when you said even women, did you mean studying them or even they are human beings? Um... Well, not the second one. That's, okay, got around. it. Just make sure. <laughs> I'm fucking around. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, no, I, I mean, st study them. Um, so, for instance, like, athletes, I would be interested in seeing, like, the like, like if we had perfect science, if we could study endocrinology, uh, endocrinology perfectly, I'm not saying that it would be causal. I'm, seeing, I'm saying it would be correlative. Mm -hmm. So if somebody was, like, super high in estrogen, they would probably like stereotypically feminine interests. If they were super high in testosterone, they might have stereotypically, not only stereotypically masculine interests, but they also might have like some of the worst aspects of to toxic masculinity. Um, I'm actually pretty sure that that's fairly well studied that like some of the, uh, some prison populations like are made up of like the top 10% most aggressive people uh, in society. Um, so, so hold on, I'll, I'll give you more fuel and then you can fight me. Um, so why should these structures exist? Okay. So, so for instance, you, you brought up that we're moving to a post scarcity society that we're escaping the demands of the natural world in ways that we never thought were possible. Um, that okay. technology is uh, very quickly increasing in ways that we, we didn't even really conceptualize like fusion power is hopefully on, um, on the horizon. Um, renewables is hopefully on the horizon. Space exploration yeah, might be on the horizon. And like, um, there's a whole like bunch me. of things that might make Love uh, to get some human competition and human violence obsolete. Uh, but what I would say, 
is that uh, there's always going to be some level of human violence that's necessary. And even if interpersonal human violence is something that we somehow evolve past, that isn't to mean that we're not going to bump into another space-faring species that's not going to have our enlightened view on violence. There might be some competition. There might be some, you know, purges. There might be some genocides. There might be some xenocides. Um, so it's actually so that that's what I would say. Uh, Dylan was asking, like, what is the necessary component of masculinity? Um, I would say that you can't one, you can't deal without uh, masculinity in general. Two, you can't deal without violence. Violence is a, a part of the natural world, and when your technology collapses, you have to be rely, uh, reliant on biological structures that we've evolved over time, obviously for a reason. Well, like being safe in case racist aliens come along. Yes, exactly. Okay. If the racist aliens come along, you're going to want me. <laughs> I mean, I, I think that, um, like, I don't know. I, I think we should, the idea that, like, violence is a part of the natural order is, like, there's a lot of things that are a part of the natural order that doesn't necessarily mean that, um, that yeah, we should, I mean, like, Lycan's like, killing things on, on TV right now. What's that? <laughs> Lycan's killing things right in front well, of our I eyes mean, right it's now. Our, it's long well, dead. Co Counterpoints, I, I, I hate to inform you, but I believe that is already dead. Oh, but he, but he killed my friend, Mr. Lobster. No, so he I'm wasn't on screen. That is true. He wasn't on screen. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's on screen. <laughs> but uh, the implication was there, nonetheless. Um, yeah. But I will say that, like, um, yeah, there's... But I don't know. Uh, I don't... Okay, so everything... Then I've done a lot of reading on this, but, but again, uh, dropping studies is pretty difficult on these panels. But um, uh, when it comes to, like, testosterone versus estrogen, obviously hormones have an effect on our behavior to a certain degree. But uh, mm -hmm. it is um impossible to um overlook the fact that people um that their their biggest impact is like on our physical appearance and mm. then that often determines our physical appearance in in our you know very imperfect society often determines how we're treated and how we're raised um which has like a huge effect on things um so i don't know like is there a uh is there a possibility that like certain traits are going to be you know if you have your like, random roll of the dice like um uh, internal hormone levels are going to lead to this that or the other thing I, sure to a certain degree at, like again like i said as is true for why i like diet coke versus non-diet coke or or whatever else there's a whole bunch of stuff that can be affected by invisible hormone like in, in unfathomably complex um hormone interactions and whatnot um i just don't think that we should build our society around those things for the most part because i don't think that they're impactful enough um to override the uh the the need to build a society that is more just and more kind to the people who like don't perfectly prescribe to something like just because there is like there is absolutely like um testosterone increases like passive aggression um like or like like base level aggression doesn't necessarily mean that like you can make a rule that all men are like that men should be the aggressive ones because even if it increases a little bit oh. like there's probably women who have like really low t who are super fucking aggressive because of a hundred other things that happened in their lives um well, i mean, let me, for example let me like i'm i'm generally viewed as somebody who's pretty aggressive i have literally my body doesn't even produce testosterone <laughs> like it doesn't like i i have to i have to take hormones or else i don't have any because of the, the surgeries i've had so it's well, like yeah and no i want to ask you a question so so for instance but even in a even in a uh let, let's say that we were able to like abolish gender tomorrow yeah. right there would mm -hmm. still be there would still be people who would express themselves in different ways oh, so course, so for absolutely. instance like i i might be identical in a post-gender society i might actually have the same outlooks and same interests hell yeah probably um, would so yeah. yeah so so that that's kind of my um my point though is that sure. like there, there's aspirate, there's aspirational ideals that whether or not you gender them or not, um, there's aspirational ideas, ideals in a in a variety. Like I think one of the strongest parts of this is that people can be as fucking different as fucking night and day and all along the fucking sure. spectrum. Um, so so freeing people to be who they are is I'm totally fucking fine with. I don't give a shit. But at the same time, I would stereotype and and maybe gender that like even if we were uh, even if we were a, a, a post gender abolished society. Um, probably 50%, 60% of folks might still find themselves playing into stereotypes. Maybe. I mean, I'm sure. But but at the same time, like, so? Then you just get identified for who you are and what you do instead of being, like, forced into a box that doesn't even serve us. Like, we gain nothing. Oh, wait, hold on. Wait. What if, what if by whether it's genitalia or uh, 
a style of a type of presentation that is overwhelmingly towards a certain group of people. So maybe in the future, it's something different, but right now it's masculine and feminine. What's wrong with that idea? Because we do that with everything. Now we can talk about the bad things and that would be what I think would be appropriate to talk about now. Like what are the bad things about that? But we do that type of grouping in so many different ways that um, if we, as a society become more emotionally mature and cognizant of these issues and we resolve them, masculine and feminine, as we start to educate people on the good and the bad about masculinity, masculinity and femininity, um, there's really no reason to abolish it beyond that. So I mean, if we're addressing the like, issue. Are you saying that like it would, that the, the term masculine or feminine would like transition to um, in such a society would transition to more of like a general descriptor as opposed to something that's no, used as I'm a... not even at that point. I'm saying oh. that if we address the issues of masculine and, and feminine, like the good and the bad of that paradigm existing, uh, because those for the most part do describe, though it changes through the years, they do describe the overall bulk of some semblance of what a man and a woman is. I think that that's um, actually not entirely accurate. Um, and, and to a certain degree, like this is, um, you know, a little bit of this is going to be me making an argument um, out of my own personal experience and my own observations, because this sort of thing has not been studied on a massive level, um, like as far as like how like what traits we like identify as and how many people actually live up to those. But geez, like I know a lot of fucking people who I know a lot of people who are, you know, perfectly comfortable being cis, um, straight and whatever. Um, and ex but but have a bunch of things that they've literally personally told me like I would do this differently if I would if there wasn't a risk of me like being severely mistreated or or made fun of or targeted or I would not be you know or like fired from my job over um, like I, I don't know I really I always love this one example like people I'm like the, the future I dream of is a future in which people can uh, can you know like like masculine folks people who are, would be considered masculine now can ex can freely express themselves as like a jojo character if they so desire um and fully embrace strength and beauty at the same time and i would i would uh i like strongly fight for that type of future and i don't necessarily think it's helpful for us to presuppose like a binary or even like a um even a uh uh like a uh I don't know, like the, the general understanding because of sure, vague study. Sure, but that study. could be a, a societal change that we make, right? We could stop presupposing. Well, right? I mean, we, we already are, though. That's already happening. That's not really how it works. Yeah. Like, as long as we have categories, we'll use them to otherize each other. Yeah. So I don't, I don't think that just saying, okay, we're going to take away all these negative traits, and then all of a sudden, no one is going to have any sort of presuppositions about anyone else. I don't really think that it works that way. That's not really how our can brains you, categorize information. Can you come up with a few other categories that experience the same things as genders do? What do you mean? In what sense? Like you say that, uh, that because it's the categorization that uh, is causing yeah. a lot of yeah, the harm. Race. So I'm yeah, saying race. like, race. Race. well, sure. Race. Okay, race is an easy one. But what I'm saying is, we're not going to stop being different races. We're not going to stop considering people, whatever they are. Yes, we are. We are going to fix yeah, this. Okay. Yeah, we actually already really? have. Yeah, 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 yeah we actually already have. Yeah. Like, like the the, the... Oh, well, like so. I'm Italian, right? I didn't used to be white. Like they didn't used to consider Italians white. Um, but you're still Italian. But you're still Italian. Yeah, but but wait a second. That's Hold that's on. What I'm you, wait, wait, wait. That's not. Okay, that's that's also that's nationality. That's okay. Not... All right, cool. Let's play the semantics game. Okay, fine. So nationality. You're still going to be defined. By a group, oh, you're going to be defined by a group, and that group is going to then be defined by certain stereotypes, characteristics, whatever. Like the Italian stereotype doesn't go away just because you're no longer considered brown. I also, I also just assumed like eight things about you as soon as you said you were Italian, and I was like, oh, that makes sense. <laughs> as an Italian, I literally thought of twelve that I could name off the top of my head. Okay, but you're describing like a number of different things. Like, so there's right. like, first of all. There is a colloquial conflation of um, nationality, ethnicity, and race. Um, as far as like, if we're talking on an academic level, the conversation around race has changed so much over the last fifty years. Like, <sighs> we don't even use the, like academics don't even use the the language the same way. Like when they're talking about race, that's not addressing the issue, Demon. Wait, Mama. actually, the, the right, issue is it's not because there's like, still race. Race okay. still exists. Just because our discussion. Okay. 
like I want to abolish borders, right? Like I don't really like the concept of countries and nationalities. So, I mean, if you're trying to find some sort of logical inconsistency, you're not really going to get that from me because I don't think we should be doing that either. But it is, um, even if we, when we didn't have borders, people still found groups to identify by. You are not going to get rid of group identification. Wait, wait, yes, nobody is saying to get rid scale. of group I'm identification. What no I'm one... saying is when you, we're talking about labels, right? So I think that's what Neiman Mama is that's talking about. Said. The boxes that we put people in and these ver these words that we attach to them with all this baggage attached to the word. That's what you're talking about, right, Neiman Mama? That's always going to happen. More or less, yes. Okay, I recognize, well, wait, we I recognize that like- If to not happen, it doesn't have to, and that's why we're discussing this. You can't qual qualify the idea that that is going to ever go away. In Actually, any reasonable, why? logical, on the near horizon fucking why? scale, because I mean, it's not. Okay, well, wait, wait, hold on a second. Like, you can't just say, like, I don't like it, and therefore it won't be. So, for, I'm not saying hold that. on. So well, you want to you wanna let me finish my original? Happening. Like, okay, Sorry. Go ahead. Like, I, I don't know. Like, I don't know what's going on here now. It's getting real spicy really fast. But all right, that's fine. I can deal with it. Okay, so when it comes to, um, when it comes to like, um, various, like... Uh, I don't know categorizations that we're going to to um to put people into yeah of course there's always going to be some level of categorizations but we can really like there's a this is really easy we've fought against these types of categorizations a million times in the past and in fact we fought against stereotypes um national stereotypes are, are already less popular than they were 50 years ago are you fucking kidding me um and not only that but racial stereotypes especially have um i would hope at least and in, and ideally i mean perhaps there's been a re a resurgence but that's a different conversation but we generally agree that like moving away from stereotyping people because of their race is a pretty good thing when i talk about sure. gender abolitionism i talk i didn't about, argue against that by the way okay but you kind of did you, you maybe didn't mean to but you kind of did um no and, but no see no hold on i need to explain exactly how i did okay. if you're going to say that that's fine All right. but i need you to explain it exactly right. yeah. because it's the same logic it's the, it is, it's it is justifying, it wait, wait, justifying the existence of like un, un, of like, um, ill functioning categorizations because categorizations exist. I didn't say all are going to be ill functioning. I you literally, hold on, let me go is back. Going to continue. I know that you really don't want me to talk for some reason. Um, but stop, don't play that game. I'm I mean, not going to do that. This is the third time, and I didn't say you anything. You really think I don't want you to talk? You're doing it right now, act actually. Literally, because actually you're making doing it right a dumb now. point, and I'm I'm stopping you there. Well, you then don't, you know what? You passed then, the dumb point. Yeah. Okay. Well. Uh... <laughs> well, I, I will say, uh, Dima Mama, if you want to make your point, you are allowed. You can make Thank your point. you. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Um. So, uh, what I was trying to say is that you literally argued that um that just a couple seconds ago that categorizations exist. They're not going anywhere. I'm saying that obviously we have to categorize information. That happens all the time. But we can choose more useful categorizations, and we have historically over time. We've moved away from categorizing people from by race and nationality and ethnicity um, for tons of reasons because there's a lot of useless, um, bad outcomes that come from that. Likewise, I think that we should move away from categorizing people based on these arbitrary genders that mostly shove people into boxes and cause um, pain to people. Um, and, Do you think political labels should be removed? Um, I mean— Generally, I don't really like use a whole lot of political labels. Like, and there's a reason you don't for that. think there's value in knowing the general consensus of a group. Um, I mean, it depends, right? Like, I mean, it depends on the label, right? Like, people ask me, like, oh, what are you all the time? And I just say, well, I'm a lefty who has some anarchist philo philosophical leanings, and sometimes that irritates so people. And, but, Wait, quick, but, quick, quick point, quick point. I think there's also a difference between ideas and inherent characteristics of people. Yeah, I mean, I would think you that's agree also as an Italian? Hold on as an italian would you agree that there are certain familial considerations behaviors ways that as a, in positives entirely positive so we can focus on those um that as growing up in an italian family you experience whether it's sunday supper traditions whether it's um you know going to church whether it is uh the type of a way that you celebrate christmas versus the rest of the world would you would agree i assume that that exists right um, I mean, that's not something that I experienced from my from my family. Um, from the German side of my family, that was something that I experienced, though. So I do okay. understand what you're talking about in terms of tradition. But I don't think anyone here is arguing about um, erasing all tradition. Like, I don't think that's no, what we're talking about. No, that's what I'm saying. Well, I'm bringing up the point that just by saying you are Italian, there are some assumptions I can make that aren't negative, that may or may not be true, but are likely to be true. 
or are common in that group of people. And I, what, I don't if we agree go back to earlier, that. hold on. If we go back to earlier in the conversation, the comment was made that these ideas of grouping would go away and that they are only serving harm. And I am saying, no, not, they're but not you not just proved harm. that none of those things that you said about her were correct. Like it didn't no, help you, it was true. useless. Hold on. Wait, hold on. hold on, wait, how did hold you on. walk away from that? I'm sorry, wait, real quick. Connor points is a, 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 you know, a partial party to that conversation. Do you see how she just arrived to that conclusion? Which one? The, the the idea that I just proved her point. What? Uh, no, but I did just walk out of the room in order to uh, get no, some well, water. Okay, but... okay. I, think need, I think we need to reel Sorry. this back. I think we need to reel this back. So, so what I wasn't saying was that um, we will get rid of all uh, categorizations of people and we will get rid of um, all sort of preconceived notions about people based on characteristics. That's not necessarily what I was saying. What I was saying was that here now in 2021 tied to the terms of male and female specifically there is a lot of baggage right so i'm not saying we'll never characterize any group of people or have he, yeah, any he's not presuppositions listening. but Whatever. i think what demon mama and i specifically are saying is that with gender specifically and that you would have to take um characterizations of people you would have to take them case by case by case so no, none of us are advocating for uh getting rid of all like say stereotypings of, of people based on certain things but specifically with gender that there's a lot of harm that's been but, done. right right no i agree with you that and you kind of missed the this part of the beginning so just to be clear like i'm going to align mostly with a lot of what you and demon mom will believe on on this idea of toxic okay. masculinity and gender but i do have a problem with the idea that it, i i'm not a gender abolitionist and so to to kind of feed bounce back off your point to what demon mama had said earlier that started this kind of discussion is the idea that i have no problem or i'm sorry the idea that gender needs to be abolished because it only serves to do harm there there is nothing wrong with the idea that when someone says i'm italian or someone says i'm jewish or someone says i'm from south africa or someone says i'm from auckland new zealand um that i have an idea what they might be like what their traditions might be what some of their worldviews might be whatever like there's so, that can if we take literally everything i just said but only the positive we are going to do that and there's nothing wrong with that so the, the mama, idea uh, that people exi exude a um a masculine or feminine trait once society has figured out how to not be fucking shitty to either side and fix it and to not let those traits you know become a problem there's nothing wrong with the idea of masculine and feminine yeah, at that point you, D Demon Mama, I want to I want to back like it up a little bit because I, I see you I, I see you having some objections. <laughs> no, I just I just listen. I just find it funny that like you can name like Jewish people as an example of people where people will definitely responsibly use stereotypes. About well, listen, listen, why are we listen. talking about stereotypes? We're talking uh, well, about things. because we're talking about gender. The core of your the argument label. is about stereotypes. But hold on, no, before, it's not about stereotypes. Before we get sidetracked, before we get sidetracked, <laughs> fucking. No, but but I actually I agree with Lycan. I think that I think that these generalizations or these approximations of what like a man should be or a woman should be have been, um, you know, th there's basically some. I'm not going to disagree that there's baggage on it. Jesus Christ! Sorry, my son. Uh, he nicked my nose earlier while we were wrestling, and now it's just I picked that up and I accidentally started bleeding. Um, so so basically, the my my point being that like okay, so stere stereotypes or generalizations that like people don't fit into, and then holding them accountable to stereotypes or generalizations that they don't fit into is rude as fuck, and it's kind of shitty, and it's a very like it, it's a shitty way to interact with the world, but. What I would argue is that having a general idea of what somebody is or would be based off of some stereotype, but then moving in closer to the individual and finding out, you know, do, do they match my perception, my exterior perceptions? Are they completely different? Do they have completely different things about it? That, that's just something that we do as human beings as far as like categorizing in generality and then learning specificity through, uh, through interaction. Um, I'll give you a brief anecdote and then I'll yield so we can, you know, argue about it. But basically, um, I, I served in the military for four years. I did four years in the Marine Corps. And I, I, I served in a unit that was like 70% black, uh, one Brazilian, one uh, Cambodian, one Peruvian, and like one Somali who didn't fit in with all the black people. And, and even amongst the black people, there was like a wide array of diversity that I had never understood before. Um, si the city black guys talk shit to the country black guys. The Northeastern Yankee black guys talk shit to the Dirty South black guys. Everybody talks shit about the Caribbean black guy. Uh, the guy from Jamaica. Um, everybody was talking shit about the Somali because he was Muslim and a little effeminate. 
Um, they, you know, and then like we all fucking dug on each other, and of course they picked on me because I was the fucking white boy, right? Uh, um, so what I was saying is we started with these stereotypes that were negative. Um, we talked shit to each other along negative stereotypes, but what happened through proximity and interaction was we learned who each other are and moved past the stereotypes. So for me, it's not necessarily having like a general idea of what something is. It's whether or not you have a negative idea of what something is that's, uh, that is um, that is harmful. And then are you willing to move into specificity once you start interacting with a different person? And that that would be I, I mean, it uh, just basically how I like... think most people handle the world both of the anecdotes or examples that were used were examples of um stereotypes and and uh categorizations being basically r very wrong in a lot of ways and you and them having to be overcome and i would say that we could so probably what? we could probably get closer uh to just being in that point if we normalized the process of getting to know people as the people that they are and not basing them based off of um outdated uh categorizations that don't actually make any sense like for example i mean um if if people knew what my nationality was i'm sure people would probably have some stereotypes about me that they would want to do but none of them are even true there because i have no connection to that it's it's such a silly it's such a silly categorization and it comes specifically by the way like the obsession with national like characterizing people's personalities based on their nationality is most frequently not actually based on real fact it's more based on like this this period of time that we that we come out of of like the late 1800s early 1900s where there was a uh, highly nationalistic literal world wars over nationality and it's um i don't know i just don't find these things useful and when when like Listen, and, when like the fact that you're up, trying to abol you're trying to abolish categories that make it impossible to be bigoted against brit bongers and i find that offensive uh, so sure, whatever. <laughs> i mean to me it just seems like these are very arbitrary um ways of categorizing people that are but that aren't very accurate or helpful and there might be some anecdotes i, to where I it's think like, they're I mean, Sorry, sorry it just it doesn't seem to be actually helping us do anything and it seems like we're actually having to do more work in in undoing them and I, there's, and also uh -huh. and at the cost of lots of people falling into stereotypical behaviors and again i recognize that um certainly not every single type of like of like nationalistic categorization is necessarily inherently bad off of its cuff um like i mean there are positive there are positive stereotypes that that exist all over the place um but those stereotypes again might not actually be accurate and so it might just be better if we learn to just meet each other as humans meet each other as uh fellows who who found each other in the same place like and bond over that and bond and and work out our other mutual disagreements then try to force people in these very very strange and outdated category categories which i happen to believe gender belongs to we're, we're maybe we're talking past each other a little bit maybe. but i'm not talking about for I, i'm not talking about forcing people into categories well, but uh, that like, is the result like, though right like i know that you, oh, that's like but, nobody wants nobody openly wants to do that but when you have but okay but i i want an opportunity to explain a sure, little sure, bit. sure 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 so so okay so so basically like these categories i understand that you would like to abolish these categories or at least abolish some of these categories um, but the, some of these categories serve some level of utility, or at least the utility that I would argue for. Sure. Even in like the the toxic example that I use, like the um, the you know basically people stereotyping each other based off of like region um, and country of origin and you know cultural affectation and like all that kind of stuff. What was actually like really fun about getting to know people was finding out when they met their when they met their stereotype and when they completely fucking didn't. Like that that was like one of the craziest things about fucking learning about people was that uh, so I mean. I mean, obviously our caribbean black dude was super into pot um but he was able to uh you know basically bond with the mixed race kid over loving pot because he was like a surfer dude from california so they had like this weird stereotypical cultural bond that they were able to meet each other over with same thing with like uh you know the black guys from the north and the black guys from the south now they started with fights regional fights about who was the best hip-hop artist obviously the dude from new york loving jay-z and the people from the south loving outcast but what ended up happening through this stereotypical tit tat um the tit for tat like argument about whose region had the best artist was like this newfound respect and appreciation for another person's perspective not because they didn't fit into the stereotype or there weren't like actual regional alliances or cultural differences or anything like that but because those competitions um and those stereotypes led to the conflict that allowed people to understand each other now like 
I understand well, you're saying like, like I would like case, to get like... past like well I'm almost done. Um, like I understand you're saying like we should move past past the conflict to begin with. Um, but I almost feel like that one. I only think it's a problem if it's <laughs> negative, if it's negatively impacting people's lives. Um, and then two, I think it's actually like a, it's just like a, a tool. Like like just because you, it, it's like it's like taking a, a satellite image of the planet and being like, where the fuck is you know Orlando? Well, a satellite Connor, image isn't going to be fucking helpful. The audience is currently pelting you with hot garbage and booing. Okay. I don't give a shit. Make Fuck I just chat. To make okay. chat. Chat well. is the reason, dude. Chat is the reason why democracy doesn't work. Okay. Fuck chat. <laughs> um well, there it is yeah i i just think that like um like i don't know uh these seem like sort of um edge case like um curiosities that occurred from i mean i don't know there's there's nothing that like to me it doesn't seem like anything would have stopped the jamaican guy and the california surfer dude from just bonding over those things anyway like i don't know it to me this this like nationality maybe and maybe because they were strangers and they had no well, reference yeah, but, to I mean, but that has nothing to do with this this categorization I... you're talking about and and the well, downside okay but you you understand this is how communication works though well, right yeah, you, but, use, but you start you're, with like a low you're... resolution picture and then you move into a more nuanced one well to a degree yeah but like at the same time it's like you're you're pinning um, all of this happening, like normal human interaction, and you're you're pivoting it on like or hinging it on like, well, we gotta have these national characters, and like, no, no, maybe they would just be friends anyway because they would get to know each other as people and their interests, as opposed to spending time like so, having to decode stereotypes. And again, something I've been trying to talk about this entire time for a little bit is the fact that the price that we pay by normalizing, categorizing people based on arbitrary characteristics is that inevitably it does make room for a lot of racism. It does make room for a lot of nationalism. It does make room for a lot of sexism. Um, and Ooh. I don't think, I don't think it's so easy to just say, well, why can't we have all the good without the bad? Because I believe that structures tend to create these things and the structure that says that like, uh, people who are born this way behave like this, even if it's even if it's false that that's the case. Like that sort of thing is not good in my okay. opinion. Okay, so yeah, Connor, I want to I want to I want to kind of like uh, I hate feeling like this interest. Um, but I want to say so with what Demon Mama is saying, there's a lot of the stuff there that I agree. Um, and there's you know I already agreed with you that where I think these there's nothing wrong with these cultural identities existing, right? But I will say as a fellow Marine and someone who saw the same things that you were talking about, who engaged in the same things that you're talking about, um, there's nothing wrong with them, those individuals bonding over the ideas. What is a problem though, and what I think is something more pertinent for the, the entire group to discuss if we disagree on it, is the idea that, you know, like you have the Asian friend, right? And you make the fucking, um, you know, all the stereotypical Asian jokes. I don't even know if I can list them and not get in Math. trouble um please like, don't like <laughs> but um but like you know we have that friend or you know i i when i was first in the military my girlfriend was mexican and i made mexican stereotype jokes right and while the person might seem comfortable with it or they might seem okay with it or they might seem like they're they're appreciating the joke and they're laughing along with it we don't always know and it's actually very common for individuals to go along with it to not make the other person feel bad. Whereas to them, it's something they experienced, not just from you, right? We're not the creative this, ones that just came up with the fucking cat Chinese food joke, right? And so is, mm -hmm. it, no, 100%. it's important for us to have this conversation and be cognizant of how you and I, even though we have the best of intentions, shouldn't engage with those type of jokes for that reason, especially in front of other people, well, because they want encourage or reinforce that question. shit. I have a question. Um, have either of you, I, I, I don't know if I missed it, have either of you guys demonstrated what you think the positive uh, utility of gender or um, gender differentiation is? Have you guys said what positive you think comes from it? Sure. Um, I don't, and can I, I, sorry, I just don't want to miss a, I don't want to miss a point, uh, but I literally wrote down positive utility of gender so I don't forget your question. Is that okay? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, um, so yeah. So, so this is actually a conversation that I've had with multiple people. Nobody likes my, uh, nobody likes my stance and that's fine. Uh, chat can go fuck themselves. So, <laughs> um, I actually think it's really hard, um, to basically what's really hard is if we were to follow uh, demon mama and Merrick's prescriptions, essentially what we're doing is we're, we're trying to pick a societal ideal and we're asking everybody to elevate themselves, uh, to that ideal. Um, but we're, what essentially what we're pushing for is equality, right? 
And what was actually really interesting about my social interaction with this group was it was a lot easier for all of us to go down into the muck with each other uh, rather than going up into the ideal. So basically what ended Mm -hmm. up happening, I might have brought up like stereotypes of like, uh, you know, how I denigrated other people. But I was a fucking mayo eating, Justin Timberlake looking, cousin fucking, uh, you know, trailer trash fucking motherfucker. Like, and that's just how we talk to each other. Now, this maybe this is toxic masculinity, but this is my some of my favorite favorite fucking toxic masculinity was sitting around in a group of eight to nine guys talking shit to each other, denigrating, uh, denigrating each other's heritage, denigrating each other's cultures, religions, family statuses, all that kind of stuff. That was like, that was some of the most positive toxic masculinity that I've ever had in my entire fucking life. Because basically what ended up happening was we loved each other at the end of it. We were talking shit. We were banting. And so to, to if, if I was to go into that fucking circle of, uh, of people and I was like, listen, guys, these stereotypes about the way that we perceive each other is actually really harmful. And you shouldn't make fun of the uh, the Jamaican guy uh, because he smokes pot or, or his mom loves pot or whatever. I'd be laughed out of the fucking room and I Wait, would so still be I... called like a right. mayo that's, that's the hard fucking redneck You're white trash piece of shit right. while I was being laughed at. would 100% be called that. The problem is this, <laughs> is that we don't, we lose control once it, bego- uh, once it goes beyond that point. So while you in that group, or me in the same group, again, mm-hmm. want, want to reiterate, did the exact same things, right? Mm-hmm. While that's fun and it's these moments and like I can still think of them and like look on them fondly even with my new fucking woke SJW curse. And like, it, I, 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 I'm like, yeah, it's fun fucking times. And, and to my knowledge, we're all still good and everything's fine and no long-term harm was caused. The problem is that within that group, there are going to be, unfortunately, a lot of people that see that joke is okay and then move beyond that circle where maybe that was effective or maybe that was good and let's pretend that in that situation of bonding and and hardship that all those people are in alignment and they're okay with it they go online or they go back home to other people and they have the same type of conversations or they mm-hmm. engage with those harmful ideas with just people of their same group see you soon McLean. Another sorry group, like against us in like the ideas of the group right or would be harmful to view the other oh, group that way. And, be, and so we lose Sorry, control of it after that. So what I'm saying is it's fun, but it's like sometimes, God damn, you know, even when it comes to like the Me Too movement, men and all that shit, sometimes you got to be the party pooper and say, hey, maybe ask consent before you even fucking flirt because at the end of the day, you're going to make that person feel better because that's the dynamic men and women have in the in this world. And it's unfortunate, but being the party pooper makes for a better world for some people. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I think there's also like a few things that I agree with that. Uh, I mean, I think Sorry. it's also worth considering that like there's a very good chance that people in that group, um, you know, that it, that they might suffer from that. I mean, I know that's the I case. Like, would love to introduce you to them. <laughs> well, I'm sure. Wait, wait. I'm sure there's like, listen, I I get it, but there's also like there it there can be. Uh, suffering that goes unspoken there can be pain that goes unspoken and and this is especially true i mean like my god like if you listen like the best way to learn about this is like honestly i can't believe i'm gonna say this but the best way to see some of this stuff is to go look at like like how incel like some of the incel people talk about the pain they suffered in their groups of friends of their guy friends of being humiliated and hazed and yeah for some people you you're fine and some people you make through it just fine but a lot of people don't and those people don't get listened to and like i think that like and also there's a big context thing like yeah um obviously all of us are currently living through imperfect times and we might bond over like uh, bad things i mean god fucking zizek did an entire thing about the military and uh talking about how um how the 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 sort of abuse is normalized in the military in order to get people to bond to one another all this whole shit another discussion but the fact of the matter is that like um, while maybe this works in some contexts, um, I don't see a reason why we should extrapolate that out to all of society and sure. the downsides of, of these, um, structures, um, that maybe are useful in very specific, um, circumstances or environments being extrapolated out to the rest of society can be incredibly harmful. No, I actually, uh, I want to agree with you guys really quick because what Lycan said was actually 100% what happened, okay? Um, so basically what happened was I took this like, you know, fraternal brotherhood, uh, you know, like like literally like family bond. These people could call me tomorrow and they're like, hey, let's go do some shit. And like, I, I would literally like fucking, okay, what are we doing? 
Um, but I took the suffering and I took the humor and I took the stereotypes and I the know, playful bro, banter and all that kind of bullshit. And I moved it outside of the group. And then people who didn't have a similar rapport were offended by it. They, they were basically like, yo, what the fuck? Like, you don't know me like that. What, like, like, where the fuck is this coming from? Um, and that, and that sense of humor wasn't, um, you know, wasn't shared. I have found relationships similar to them, um, since then. Um, but it's always, it's always based on like a really deep like mutual um, understanding and su like, like almost, I, I want to say suffering. Oftentimes it's fellow employees who are experiencing know, similar Lonnie. hardships um, who you share these deep bonds with where you can make dark jokes about, you know, stereotypes or behaviors or whatever um, in order to get past it. Um, so, so I want to, I want to acknowledge that I'm wrong while still having fond memories of what I did. Well, yeah, um, I mean, then, I think that exists yeah. in a lot of things, right? Like, I mean, fuck like the jokes, the type of jokes that like, trans people will make with one another when there's no cis people around is like perfectly you know that's fine i'm like, sure but there's a share but there is a what's that sex workers sex workers. yeah i'm sure it gets pretty of course I'm, I'm pretty sure it's not the most woke feminist takes oh. in uh trans and sex worker jokes no 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 not always i mean but there is a different um yeah, but, yeah well yeah but there is also like there is but again there's that context that context mm -hmm. matters and like um, there is an understanding when you're joking with, you know, two people who've been through everything that you've been through and you're on the same page. Um, mm -hmm. like there's, a, it's a very different context than just like having these things be normalized. And also there's a recognition that there is imperfection, um, that is mutual. Like, like for example, if mm -hmm. a trans, you know, if trans people are joking about, I don't know, esports or something like how trans people are the best at esports or whatever, it's like these stereotypes or whatever, or like we dominate esports or whatever the fucking jokes are. Um, that like all of these things are like, um, they're understood with like, hey, like we recognize. It's ironic. Like, yeah, it, there is an irony in it, and and that is important to distinguish. But but again, like mm -hmm. when we're talking about the broader discussion of like, w is it helpful to have these? No, I think these things would best be left at the end of the day as like, hey, this was a fond a fond memory of like trauma bonding. Um, but maybe it would not be the best to subject future generations to this type of shit, and they might be able to actually find things that they enjoy and are much more happy with and thrive better under if if it wasn't like hey this is like a s small positive at the you know as a side effect of great negatives okay but but i want to so i want to uh posit something and, and you guys can take it or reject it and merrick i have not forgotten hey, can i can i can i stop this for a second because this was something that was like a pretty big thing like a year ago or probably like before i was on twitch a uh, demon but couldn't that same argument be applied to like that old like argument that happened on twitch about the n, n word in the use of private yeah, absolutely. I think it. Uh, I think it absolutely could be applied. Um, okay. I mean, um, there's a million takes on that, but I. I think that like uh, context is like hella hella important when it comes to humor. It really is, and also context is really important when it comes to categorizations, um, and. You know, when we're talking about gender, especially like obviously, I want to kind of tie it tie it back to the topic at hand. When we're talking about gender, like. Um, we're not really even societally, we're not even at the point where like people acknowledge that like there are a significant, a large number of people who are non-binary and we're not even mm. to that point yet. So like right now, what's happening is that these structures of like these like grossly inaccurate stereotypes of what is a man and what is a woman and what is masculine and what is feminine are being used to craft laws and craft culture in real time and all based on bad assumptions like really bad assumptions so we're not even at the point of like being getting rid of the things that allow us to like look at the at like what positives they're just there's so many negatives that it's like drowning us out like god like i could go on about this all day i mean i talk about this on so my stream all the time but yeah before before we move on, because I, I want to address like kind of the conversation that we all just had. Connor, can you go ahead and answer Merrick's question? Then we'll we'll circle back to that. Thank yeah, you. sorry, sorry for making you wait. That was fucked up. Um, but but uh, that was po positive utility of gender. Um, so what I would hope to preserve, even let let's say that uh, demon demon mama, um, she she just wins the entire uh, cultural argument. We we all decide uh, as a community to just like uh, abolish I gender. Will. And now we're, we're all moved past it. The thing, the thing that I think is like most necessary to preserve is just like positive examples of humanity. I don't care if it's fucking masculine. I don't care if it's fucking sure. feminine. I don't give a shit. Um, but there, there's stereotypical aspects of masculinity I that I would valorize that I think lots of uh, progressives and leftists wouldn't. Um, so for like instance, what? like, um, yeah, like physical strength, 
the ability to commit violence um you know basically uh so so there's this uh there's this <laughs> <laughs> there's this fucking meme like trans inclusionary radical misogyny where uh <laughs> ellie yeah like, like yeah elliot page um you know transitions and then they're like welcome to the club elliot and they're fucking drinking yeah, beer and I don't hot wings because you're trans i hate you because you're a bitch because you're a <laughs> so sorry i'm sorry i'm sorry wow. for laughing um wow. but, like, <laughs> that was technically a quote <laughs> Yeah. But there's but there's a certain level of um, fraternity that I would hope would survive uh, the gendered purges, where you could have some people, uh, including uh, trans folk and maybe masculine women, uh, who just want to sit a, sit in a circle, drink beer, and talk shit about the world, their jobs, their employers, everybody in an aggressive and mean way, but in a way in which everybody thinks is funny because they're all in on the joke. And, and sorry, th this goes back to context and then I'll, then I'll yield. Um, but, but so one of the things that Lycan and one of the things that Demon Mama said was that like context is super important and that uh, people knowing or being in on the joke is super important because I'm taking this very like niche context in which everybody thought that stereotypes were funny and but if you extrapolate it out to the culture, it's very obvious that people are not being ironic or nuanced uh, with their labeled takes yes, of other correct. cultures, right? Um, what I would say though is what our what my goal would be, and maybe it's a fucked up goal, is to get there eventually. Because if I'm saying like e we're equal, trans folk are equal to cis folk, uh, straight folk are uh, equal to bi folk, uh, bi folk are equal to gay folk, um, and black folk, white folk, brown folk, uh, Asian folk are all similar then I would hope that at some point, like I would measure American multicultural success as when we can all walk in the same room and fuck with each other. And we know that we're all fucking around. That would be a pretty high goal for me. So it seems like you're actually more concerned with egalitarianism than you are maintaining a uh, gender at all actually because what you said was you want to be able to sit around a, around a campfire drinking beer talking shit and aggressive women can be there masculine women can be there trans people can be there um i don't think that i'm that particularly masculine um but i like dark humor i love to talk shit um that's i want to sit around and drink beer like that's cool i, I would i would want to do something like that so it doesn't actually sound like you are um defending the net utility for gender it just sounds like you just have a specific like uh, kind of traits in your mind and you would want those to to be encouraged and you would want those to live on but i don't know that any leftist is actually arguing against that yeah um, i certainly uh, wouldn't argue against I, that for the record well like, okay maybe not, not any leftist there are a yeah. lot of crazy just totally insane <laughs> leftists like i'll be the first person to admit that um but i don't think that that's necessarily the arguments that we are making right, right. now as our package of our gender abolition because right now to me sir you are sounding like a gender abolitionist. A nah. little bit, oh, yeah. No. I have a little bit. Mm -hmm. I have counterpoints, but I'm being charitable. Well, I just think that, like, <laughs> I do think that there's um, a a uh, you know, like I, I think that a lot of times that the environments that you're talking about, our stere these like stereotypes and these categorizations, these broad categorizations, generally um, make it harder for us to have those things. Um, and I would point to like probably the best example of that being the ongoing like alienation from gaming that that like femme people in general have. And if mm. you don't think that's the case, like that's room for a whole nother discussion. I, I can. Oh, I can pin I can pin that down. I am so confident in that. Like the, the gaming culture still is grossly, grossly toxic towards femme presenting people. And that is a result of these assumptions that is a result of the way that we categorize people and make assumptions despite the fact that like holy shit like like femme people love fucking video games as much as anybody else in fact like it's like it's just you know these assumptions are really bad so, and they're deeply ingrained so yeah i, I think that kind of goes back to <laughs> so Sorry, I, go ahead, I, like. I might i might i might address some of them here so I think that goes back to why we were having that call conversation i think we veered away from the idea that gender is a category that exists and only or mostly causes harm that can't be reduced by uh, social intelligence, like as we become more cognizant of these issues. So right. So let's say hypothetically mm -hmm. that 80% of women who present by the nebulous idea of what a feminine person is, right? Those people don't like killing bugs, don't like 
camping and don't like like anything outdoorsy and like rough and whatever like let's just again we're going with some stereotypes the point of bringing these up though is for the hypothetical of if that is true if that is objectively true what is wrong with having that idea if we don't make the negative assumptions that put pressure or undue judgment or whatever on those people what's wrong with the idea that we qualify or yeah we quantify it by that assumption but we don't enact with it in any negative way because we're now a more educated and intelligent to you, society to me to that just up, if that you wanted to open it up to, tra to trans folk and non-binary folk why couldn't it just be femme you know there's femme well, gay well, people there's well, non-binary people more directly to this point of like well if we only embrace the positive stereotypes around genders then what is the issue the thing is some of the positive stereotypes around women are that they're good with kids they're nurturing right no no, no. so we break those down too I don't, we get rid of those what we get rid of the ones that that cause that kind of assumption about role in society well then like we, we because we do that through education that doesn't mean we get no we get rid of like if let's say again for the hypothetical 80% of women do prefer to be the stay at home mom cliche, right? That is just the preference, but it's not because of societal pressure. In this hypothetical, we've educated society. Men no longer expect that from women. Women no longer feel that's a role that they ought to jump into or should be expected to. If that still ends up being the case, what is wrong with identifying that as well, that group. To... Okay, so if we take away all of our okay, so if we take away all the negative, right? And then mm -hmm. I listed off the positives and you're like, okay, well that's actually just contributing to gender roles and that's negative too. So if we take away all the characteristics of what it means to be a woman, what are we left with then? No, no, no. no. So what are you right. arguing for? I, I would just say me, this to I'm me. I'm not making it clear. I want to make sure that like I'm saying this properly. So okay. I'm not saying get rid of them. I'm saying that we get rid of the harmful um approach I think to so, those yeah, ideas. So it's like, if it if it is true, right? So no longer stereotype, if it is true, 85% of women prefer to be this, and it's not because of societal pressure, it's not because of, uh, because of their upbringing or their expectations or their life experiences. It is literally just that the idea of a woman is someone who does X. And maybe there are similar other things that aren't entirely expressed by people that identify by that gender. If those the harms are removed, what is wrong with identifying that group? And again, to go back to the example of the Italian, like there are certain things that being Italian often can mean. That doesn't mean we assume that homeboy is having a you know a pasta dinner every Sunday. That doesn't mean we assume that homegirl is this goddess stay at home Roman cook that is going to make the best fucking chicken cacciatore you have ever fucking tasted. I'm like absolutely my grandma not. does. <laughs> like exactly right but if that idea exists but we don't employ it in a negative way where is the harm so i guess my, my point becomes if we don't employ it in a negative way um it's still going to be seen as like we are still innately going to perceive it as odd if people who are falling into this category deviate from the things that we do um either subconsciously or consciously assigned to that category so like even if we're like hey it's okay if you don't have kids or if you're kind of cold as a woman or if you're not nurturing even if we're like telling everyone everyone is saying out of our mouths that it's okay um if we still have this concept of woman and i'm kind of frosty and icy and i fucking hate children and i want them to stay away from me um there's still going to be this idea of like oh that's not normal that's a deviation um and i think that that will still kind of create what? these subconscious problems well, with the well i also I think an, that i again, have an idea to that but i want to hear a demon mom because yeah, she wanted to speak up my then... my response to this would be that to a certain degree it feels um uh, it feels like a little bit of uh wishful thinking about the way that categorizations tend to work because i think that it's like of course like if you could divine a perfect uh or or like just instantly summon a like thanos snap into existence like hey bam we have like now the perfect label to categorize all people of a specific type okay that's that's great but the fact of the matter is that's not really how these categorizations work we know that like the the negative and the positive are really fucking hard to disentangle and if we encourage people to continue using labels that aren't 
inaccurate, even if sometimes they're po like positively leaning, like uh, benevolent, you know, sexism or benevolent racism or whatever, like these things can still be inaccurate. And even if they're not necessarily like greatly hurtful, um, like for example, um, assuming like, pos like, I don't know, making like a quote unquote positive assumption that every Italian woman is like a God tier cook. Um, it can feel very weird, uh, dehumanizing and even objectivizing, even if it's like a positive trait. Like, I mean, well, no, I, we already addressed that though. We already said that, like, we're not going to assume that they are. They, we assume that that well, may true, be a I mean, characteristic like, of it, but we're not going to engage with it in any way that well, actually true. qualifies it until it's presented. Then aren't you functionally describing like functional abolition of these things? If they're, if nope, they're basically, if they're basically nope, not I said that they could used. Still, nope. Okay. I, I'm saying they can still be applied to people sure. of what we consider the idea of masculine and feminine. But like, okay. let's get rid of gender. Yeah, I, I, like I, I guess I'm just a little confused like... about like like how this would like work. Like, if you think like I think that someday we will probably have. A, a plethora of terms to describe people in different ways and that we will move away from a society uh, in which we we like uh, like litigate or or um pressure people based on categorizations we'll always have we we'll always need ways to describe things but i think there are better ways to structure these that are based on more useful traits and more useful um things than just like making broad categorizations and catch-alls um and also like even if 85 percent or whatever um of of a group like have that trait 15 percent is still fucking huge like that's still like a lot of people who aren't going to have that trait so uh i don't know like well, I, I so, feel okay, like at when, the end so of the day, you you're still you're label. still missing. Like, and I want to back you up. When it, Jesus Christ! <laughs> yeah, do you want to draw? Like, I don't know. I'm going to say this, and then I'm gonna pass it to him. I just want to say, like, when you come up with an idea that can convince me that there is a better way to describe a man or a woman in those categories, or you divide it up into ten categories or a hundred categories, but you find a way that that happens. I will listen 100. percent Oh, I mean, I think there's idea, already until, th those, those terms already until that idea comes. Like until that really comes where you're really codifying these people in a succinct way that actually works, that codification is going to happen naturally through society, regardless of our input, until you mm. present something that actually m makes sense the way that masculine and feminine does. Well, but because I mean, right it, now, it already is happening. It like it's already happening. Like we've, are, we, in fact, we see it on this, in this space right here. Um, We're changing using, how we engage with it. Well, like, using, ter well, using terms, like, using terms like, using terms like using terms like femme presenting for example is like a super is like super super fucking useful because it describes Still engages with the idea of femininity um well, but in a very removed way, it's saying that like, but yeah, it still engages like, with it. There's still it engages the idea with it, of but femininity. in a very removed way. And it's a much more, it's a much less, um, stereotype. It's a saying, more progressive, a less harmful, am I, am I, am I gonna be still engages yeah. with the idea. Um, well, yeah, because language has to take steps. Like language is inherently con contextual language has to take steps. Like we can't just, you can't just invent a new word. Like, like tomorrow I can't just like invent an entire new language that fixes all the problems we have to take steps that that make things understandable and i would argue sure, that, right but well, you would okay say, but you gotta let me finish go the ahead, sentence go ahead. Sorry. um like uh <laughs> when when something like um like femme presenting for example is pretty pretty reasonable because it's saying like hey this is somebody and i'm sure we'll come up with better terms over time but this is one that's pretty useful right now because it describes like what in what like dress style someone chooses to dress and there you go bam and then of course we cannot ignore that there are contexts of this the reason why people use terms like femme presenting for example is because um much of society associates the pre like femme presentation aka wearing traditionally like what, what we what our society would traditionally understand as feminine usually comes alongside with a bunch of stereotypes that you don't want and so we use that term because so that people can actually talk about their experience having these things pushed on them and i do think that over time we will move away from that i think that we'll have different um different categorizations and different words that are much more succinct and, and useful um i mean there's a, there's like uh there's an, an interesting conversation about this in in like uh in in other um uh, other fields as well but uh, it, it's a little hard to like it, yeah it, no yeah. i get it like to still yeah go ahead connor go ahead <laughs> all right sorry so so no you got you guys gave me a lot um and, and i kind of wanted to give you a lot back okay so so basically we were bringing up like inclusionary spaces as being like safe spaces in which people could communicate in ways that they might not otherwise communicate um so for instance you guys brought up that like maybe trans only spaces or sex worker only spaces would be really interesting um so so the reason why i'm bringing this up is because there are like so you're, you're talking about like all these labels that hopefully will be better 
than men and women eventually that will improve society. Okay, so so I the reason why a lot of people fear gender abolition or they fear the the degradation of these uh, degradation of these labels or whatever is because there is like social utility in them to some extent, and there's also some social activities that are specifically fueled by stereotypical gender roles. So for instance, I think we all know, or at least I know, that their men uh, act very differently in, let's just say, masculine company, masculine only company. Uh, women act very, uh, very differently in femme or women only company. And then both parties act very differently in mixed company. Or that 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 would be at least I'm only on like my second point. So you're gonna have to give me a second, okay? So if you if you want to if you want to counterpoint me, go ahead and write it down. So um, preserving the positive utility of gender isn't the same as advocating for its abolition. Um, so actually, Lycan's description of his worldview is actually very hypothetically to what I think is possible. So for instance, if like all of society had this very vague general idea of what a woman is, uh, where they're like, hey, sometimes on average, they're more agreeable. Sometimes on average, you know, they're going to birth kids on average. Um, they, they're going to be more nurturing on average. They might be more interested in education or, or, or nursing or whatever on average. But let's just say it, it's not 80%. Let's say it's 60%. So basically you can have this. And then also same thing with men. Men have this stereotype. Sometimes they're aggressive. Sometimes they like MMA fights. Sometimes they like, uh, you know, going to the bar with their friend Elliot and drinking beers and pounding hot wings um, and talking shit. And that applies to 60% of men. Well, we both have these vague conceptions of what it is to be a man or a woman, but that doesn't mean that you have to strictly apply to these gendered ide uh, identities. And one of the things that Merrick brought up that I thought was really interesting was that like, um, basically like, if you don't fit these gendered uh, stereotypes, then you're thought of as a deviant. I'm sorry, I thought we lived in America. I thought we celebrated deviants in this motherfucker. Like underdogs, uh, nope. All right. Well, fine. Both of you have had more people have talked shit to both of you collectively in the past month than they've talked to me in their whole lives. Okay. True. true. All right. Thank so, you. okay. All right, all right. But I still want to make the point that if we don't celebrate underdogs or deviants or people with creative ideas or artists or people who do things in a new way, people who think differently, then should we? Is that one of the ideals of American society that we should celebrate people who think differently, act differently, uh, look differently, all that kind of shit? And I would say that America or the United States of America, as much as you guys have had very negative experiences, and I'm sorry for those negative experiences, I would like to say that that's probably possible and compatible with a lot of American values that already exist. Yield. Yeah, I don't um, necessarily disagree on your final uh, point. Although the first point I would say the mixed spaces differences is, in my experience, predominantly a result of the um, overwhelming presence of gender stereotypes that people can't actually be themselves. And I would say that uh, for the most part, that is um, most mostly contained to like, no offense, but cishet spaces um, that like in, in queer spaces, you will see much more um, like honesty in mixed company than you will in like cis, cis heteronormative spaces where like, you know, can there's, I, there's a lot no, of, hold on. Can I ask you a question? Cause I think sure. this is important. Sure. Um, so, so hold on. So, um, I, I'm trying to see if we're talking past each other. So are you saying, um, LGBTQ folk are more likely to act like themselves when they're exclusively hanging out with LGBTQ folk or when they're also hanging out with cishet folk? Oh, no, no. I just mean like in spaces where, I mean, I don't think that like, I think queer is like a huge umbrella term. I just mean mm -hmm. that like mixed, mixed gender and mixed sexuality spaces are like mm -hmm. way more common among queer, like in, in queer spaces. Like you will not like have mm -hmm. the same level of like awkwardness of like guy group bundle up and girl group bundle up when there's like a bunch of variation and people have a totally different approach but, to it. But don't um, you think that variation is a, is a variable that makes the that uh makes that like group like that group dynamic or whatever like more comfortable is the fact that there is variation the fact that there isn't this like uniformity well yeah but that's what i'm that but that's what i'm arguing for i'm arguing that we should uh, we but, should embrace that that variety and that we shouldn't try to like i don't know categorize people but not uh, in something all totally context. arbitrary like, like, okay, so uh, apparently I'm a term. Um, so, so like, what what I'm saying is that there are there are some contexts in which mask people hanging out exclusively with themselves 
is really fucking fun. Well, sure, and femme yeah. people hanging out exclusively with themselves, I'm sure is very fun for femme people. Sure. Um, and then there are also social, damn Merrick. All right, fine. You can join the mask people. Come on over. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> fucking traitor over here i just i don't know i think that most of these are like most of the things you're talking about are edge cases and will still absolutely no. exist yeah absolutely they're, i think they're I'm mostly sorry edge cases. i'm sorry for disagreeing but i think this is the way that most people socially function i think most people have so Damn, for instance if i have a guy's poker if i have a guy's poker night or whatever that's a mask social situation merrick's invited because she's cool but uh otherwise no girls allowed um so, okay then, all right so i would like sorry, to go ahead to address that I, I do have another thought about this conversation in general but if we can address that one pot part sure why sure sure i'm just talking, I'm, I'm half talking shit but i'm also serious no no no. I, I i get that absolutely and like by Happy societal posting. standards yeah like when you say oh i'm having a poker game with some friends no one's thinking that you have fucking 15 merricks sitting around the thing and a couple demon mamas right they're thinking hey you have shame lichen right the epitome of true masculinity and so with that um, I want to ask you, like, why is that a masculine thing? Is it just because you know society to expect that? Sure, like I just described. Say it for me, I'll react because, to that. Yeah, it, but it's not. So, so for instance, like, I, I think that this would actually be really sympathetic to not using queer as a slur, using everybody to know that the term. votes are in. I just want to make that clear, to everybody. The votes are in. You can continue. All right. So, fuck chat. Um, so, uh, so what, what I would say is basically like, no, th there's a certain level of like, I want to be because. I want to be stereotypically masculine with my friends and I don't want fucking judgment. Like I want to, I want to talk shit. I want to be rude. I want to be uh, bullish. I want to be gross. I want to talk about, you know, uh, gross bodily functions. I don't want judgment or sneering. Yeah. But or see, you're presupposing any of that kind of shit. You're presupposing that that's what masculinity means instead of recognizing I'm also that people of all basing, types. But I'm also basing who I invite to my gross mask party well, yeah, based off of a, my social interactions because in, no, 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 in, because in my a gender mom, abolitionist world that wouldn't you wouldn't have to worry about no, that because no, 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 no. i'm still yeah. not inviting my mom or my wife to mask that's night because they're merrick. your mom or your wife because like... merrick is gonna laugh at my gross ass jokes and my wife is gonna give me an eyebrow oh, well okay. wait, so, so, wait, so, so no, that's, i'm making that's a fun. judgment so, about interest and yeah, but, who right, will but be cool judgment, in certain spaces problem, right? based off of breaking stereotypes, but also off of stereotypes, because Merrick is interested in things that are breaking molds, breaking stereotypes. That's why she's okay. invited. Nobody well, yeah, else but, is but invited. But what you're, you're basically, you're, you're, I feel like a little bit you're granting credence to the, the abolitionist position, which is saying that, yeah, there's a lot of people who don't, who aren't necessarily um, like men or mask that would actually have a really good time that shouldn't be ruled out because of this, that, or the other thing. And instead it can just be based on interest. You're gonna find, you're gonna say, hey, we're gonna have a poker night that's gross and everybody's gonna tell offensive jokes. Who wants to be there? And a bunch of people will raise their hand and show up. And then all of a sudden you have a friends group that's not based, it's not mixed nah. up. Like, well, okay, I mean, wait, you wait, just wait, don't wait, believe okay, it. Wait, wait, but that example, we already know the femme people who aren't fun. We're not inviting them. Sorry, Demon wait, but, Mama. Oh, <laughs> I mean, that's, your, that's your own. I mean, you would have, at the beginning of this conversation, uh, you would not have, the at the beginning of this conversation, you would not have invited Merrick, and now you have suddenly sneakily added that you would invite Merrick. But at the beginning of this uh, conversation, you would, yeah, you said originally. Wait, you said that she would laugh at my poop jokes. The second yeah, she doesn't but laugh at my poop jokes, she's out of the At the beginning of this conversation, you wouldn't have invited her. She's out. If she doesn't fit, if she was just talking shit and Sorry. she was doing, I'm one of the cool girl things, she is out of the fucking poker Wait, girl, hold okay? on. Wait, wait. You guys are missing the most important part on both your sides, right? <laughs> Connor, you're missing the part of why do you assume that it's going to be mostly men, right? And we kind of talked about that a little bit. And then the second thing is Demon Mama. Again, what if mostly male presenting in the current connotation of what a man is are the people that say, I would like to engage in that. And the rest are mostly women who say that's not my type of thing then we dig, dig further and then we say is that because movies tv media parents say you ought to be uh, offended by those things those aren't ladylike and you should present as a lady right we have to dig into those but then the problem is once we dig into those if the fucking harm goes away if if connor starts stops only asking men because he's only assuming men and instead invites women and in turn invites women uh, because he's engaged with them, not because he's made assumptions about them. What's wrong with being a woman? If well, you remove the harm, the exclusion, the expectations, what is the harm, you, the well, what is the nothing, harm of being called a woman? There's nothing wrong with being, with being called a woman or anything like that. I'm just saying that like these, 
like look when when i and i know this is like some assumptions that are done uh, obviously i haven't let, like obviously we've only been able to talk about things as they come up but like gender abolition doesn't mean you literally like eradicate words from your existence it means we're going to change the way that they're in that they're institutionalized the way that we understand them that's what that means and we abolish them in the sense that like this is no longer considered something that is mandatory and that is forced on us what you're functionally arguing for is is gender abolition by another name you're basically saying let's take most of the most of the weight out of these words and if they want to stick around as like an aesthetic flair which I would agree with, by the way. I would probably stick mm -hmm. with a lot of like femme modifiers personally, even in a ge in a gender abolitionist world, because I like that stuff. But I don't think that it should be mandatory. I don't think that it should be baked into assumptions. I would like a world in which Connor doesn't have to um, uh, uninvite Merrick based on um, pink shirt and whatever else. Like, like that's like I don't know. To it's me, that seems that. Like a, if she doesn't laugh at my poop jokes, I get it. Gone. I get it. But then wouldn't it have been better at the again at the say at the beginning of this conversation? It's so the, my poop jokes then. Huh? Yeah, the thing is, is like like. <laughs> Uh, there is uh there are a bunch of like y useless wasteful exclusionary things that are being used wow. in in making assumptions about gendered language and i think that we should move beyond them it doesn't mean literally destroy the word and never use it anymore it just means like maybe we should think about maybe we should think about how we use these and what we use them for again i that think feels probably like like watch back a little bit no i don't think i have um i i because hate it when, I hate it when people time. say i hate it when people ask you for clarification on your position and then you clarify and then it's counted as like a walk back that's not a walk well, back at all let me let me like i asked for you i want to explain exactly why i said that i'm saying because for the most of this time it seems like you've been saying that the existence of those connotations is only serving to harm and therefore the no you said that you said that about what i said i specifically multiple to get rid of it i said multiple times that like i think that it is predominantly negative in our society and i do agree with that 100 percent um i think that like the positive utility that we get from terms like um like femininity and masculinity and and man and woman are um mostly buried under a a cavalcade of negative effects now i do think that there are some like edge cases scenarios that can be nice and whatever but i think that that would require um a a a recontextualization of these terms that is equivalent and tantamount to abolition um and that's why i advocate for that because i and and i think that like again i i will r refrain and say this again that that uh that that, that was a, a position that was ascribed to me the idea that there's only negativity no in fact i acknowledged multiple times in our conversation that that is not the case however i do no, think that it is you predominantly only want it gone because it only serves to do mostly negative i think it, it i think gone. it does yeah i think it does serve to mostly do negative things um most of these things are negative and uh we could probably come up with brand new words and to, if we really wanted to if we want to go to like an extremist position i bet that we could delete those words from our our, our vocabulary and in two weeks we would have better words um based on our modern context um in in two weeks we would have better descriptors just being able to get rid of the baggage that we've had for like 300 years of like anti-scientific positions about man and women men and women completely upside down opinions about these things that we could get rid of and then just start from scratch we'd probably come up with better structures it's over it's over we are done we have done uh this for about an hour and 45 minutes it has gone 45 minutes over the normal uh time limit i, I mean i go on 15 minutes over the normal time limit but i allowed it because not bad, not bad. you know entertaining so i'm going to read the results okay and i want everybody to know that uh this was chosen in this manner by two judges and one vote determined by chat so uh i just want to make that clear and that is the process we are going by give me one moment as i pick up the results Russell paper, Russell paper, Russell attention paper. Okay. Who wins? Okay. Let's find out. So, the results are one vote for Demon Mama. Next one. Chat votes for Lycan. Last vote. Lycan isn't even here. <laughs> Last vote I'm right here. is... Deciding the winner with the split decision, Lycan is the winner of the first ever match under Hippy Dippy Championship rules. Damn. Interesting. Oh my won God. With 41% of the vote in chat, doubling the next on the list, which was Demon Mama. Demon Mama got uh, second place, of course, with the vote getting 33% of judges' votes. 
welcome to the championship roster. What a way to le- leave Twitch politics with a W. I mean, <laughs> I think that with this kind of result, I am, uh, what, what does it say? Like, I try to leave and they pull me back in. Um, or whatever whatever movie quote you want to go to about thinking you're getting out of it. Well, good. here I am. People are wondering if I'm back. We know why. Though. Yeah. I, I think, think, Contra- I I think Con- Connor points deserve that more. There we go. That's all right. Well, I'm happy. We'll and I want to say to everybody who uh, maybe did not get the W this time around, I still really appreciated you coming on. It's all good. And I can't wait to have you all again on in the future. There's Lycan's partner coming out to support him. I appreciate that. And welcome you all uh, back. I'll do it with open arms as we now turn into the transition to the Hippy Dippy Championship match between Bosch versus Bastia. Would you like to have predictions from who do you guys think is going to win this? Anything? Uh, I I think uh, it's going to be tough. Uh, what's the topic? Can you tell us yeah, that? The topic? Socialism versus capitalism. Bastia mm. versus Bastia. Bosch. Bastia. Ba- Sorry. I, I, I like them both, but Bastia is going to win. Merrick? I'm not familiar enough with all of Bastia's content to say, but so I have to go with Bosch. Okay. Demon Mama? Well, I personally think that Vosh is probably going to win on an ideological level, but I think a lot of those VGGers are probably going to stick in VGG and might not vote in the poll, and that might be a big problem. So, yeah. Mm, but I do, think, I, I do think uh, I do think Vosh is going to have the upper hand in this because, uh, you know, I mean, he's got the ideological upper hand. It's a lot easier to win when you're right. Okay, and counterpoints? Nah, I'm I'm super fucking curious. So, uh, who's gonna win? Probably Vosh, because democracy is flawed. But I think it's gonna be a great fucking flight. I think it's gonna. Well, be what, a great what if it's flight. just judges? Though? What if it's just the judges making the decision? Just Which, judges. This one, by the way, chat does not get a say in this one. This oh, is only nice. Yeah, democracy. They, they, the judges can look at it. Oh, as then Vosh definitely win. Doesn't get no, no. I actually, I want to leave that 50-50. I respect the rhetorical skill and intelligence of both participants. I want it to be a fucking blood feud. I want them to fight for every single scrap of uh, rhetorical and intelligence based. Uh, debate thing. I don't want them to think that either one of them has my default vote. So no, they need to fight. They need to fight it out. Okay. So uh, I want to welcome. Nah, thank you all, all for coming by. We're going to turn into the promos that both Bastiat and Vos shot. Some advertising material as we transition to the main match, which now is starting in ten minutes. I'm going to ask all the participants to please leave the whereby as Bastiat and Vos will be entering soon. Uh, thank you, uh, and I hope you all enjoy the main event. I w- welcome you back anytime in the future. Bye, guys. Catch you.